can the brand new Pixel 7 Pro measure up to the iPhone 14 Pro Max? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna answer in this video because we just compared it to the 14 Plus for the same $900 price tag and it absolutely destroyed it in so many different ways, only a couple of things it didn't beat it in and the iPhone is now $200 more expensive than the Pixel. So can this measure up? Let's find out by comparing everything, including the designs, the displays, the performance, the speakers, and more. Now, starting off with the design, I do like this unibrow style camera bump. It looks really clean, kind of like a Cyclops. Now, in terms of the actual comfort in the hand, the Pixel kind of has like these boxy corners, so it's not as comfortable against your palm, but the iPhone has these flat sides, so it's a little bit more grippy, but not as comfortable. Now, in terms of the actual weight, the iPhone is quite a bit heavier, of course, because it has a stainless steel frame compared to the Pixel, which is aluminum, but they did polish it so it looks really nice almost like the stainless steel. Now, one thing that some people might prefer is that on the Pixel, the buttons are all on one side, right here on the right. The left side is completely clean compared to the iPhone, which has buttons on both of the sides, including that little mute switch. Now, another difference on the side is that the Pixel actually has a SIM tray. Yes, the 14 Pro no longer gets it, which makes doing 5G tests very annoying because it's such a pain to switch eSIM from phone to phone. However, the Pixel does have a slower modem, so the iPhone should have faster 5G speeds. Now, even though the Pixel is lighter than the iPhone, it's surprising that it's actually a little bit thicker. However, the iPhone 14 Pro Max's camera bump is absolutely huge. It's massive. It's way thicker than the one on the Pixel. Now, in terms of the actual camera quality, we just compared the Pixel 7 Pro to the iPhone 14 Plus, and that was a very interesting result. Now, we're gonna do the same test with the iPhone 14 Pro Max and see the differences because the cameras are pretty similar, but there are some things that are different, like the 48 megapixel main sensor that is gonna be a lot better for this phone. So definitely subscribe right now so you don't miss that video. Now, by far the biggest downside of the iPhone 14 Pro Max is that it still has a lightning port. Not only that, but it's lightning 2.0, which is super slow compared to USB-C on the Pixel. It sucks we didn't get it this year. It seems like we're gonna have to wait another year. And now let's go ahead and test out the speakers. All right, wow, that was a huge difference. The Pixel kind of sounded bland, like most of it was mids and highs, almost like completely lacking bass compared to the iPhone, which reproduced those deep bass notes and it had some punch and including being overall more clear and with sharp highs as well. So very impressed by the iPhone. And now let's move on to the display quality. And as you can see, I have the always on displays open right here. And one major difference you're gonna notice is that the Pixel has the battery life, which is nice, which you can add with widgets on the iPhone if you really want to, but the iPhone retains the wallpaper in the back, as you can see, which you cannot do on the Pixel. So that's a nice addition for iPhone fans. However, I do like that the Pixel 7 Pro on the always on display shows the fingerprint logo, so you could just log in just like that. But on the iPhone, it has Face ID, which I prefer. Bam, instant login. Now, the biggest difference you'll probably notice right here on the display is the hole punch cutout, which on the Pixel is tiny. It doesn't really mess with the display quality. However, on the iPhone, look how big that pill-shaped cutout is. It uses quite a bit of the display. Not only that, but if you look closer, you'll see that the bezels on the sides of the Pixel display are quite a bit thinner, almost all the way around. Actually, on the bottom, the iPhone's a little bit thinner. As far as the actual maximum brightness of the phones, if you set it to the highest manually, the iPhone is quite a bit brighter. Not only that, if you turn on automatic brightness and go outside, the iPhone is once again 
brighter. Now, one of the really unique selling points of the 14 Pro and Pro Max is, of course, the Dynamic Island, which you can actually pop up information like the music app, which you can see the album art and little waveforms. You can tap and hold to give you the information and skip between the song. And you can simply just tap on the island to bring you to the music app without having to go through the app switcher and find it there. In terms of actual display quality, the Pixel comes default with 1080p, but you can turn it up to 1440, which is gonna be using some more battery life, so keep that in mind. And that basically makes it sharper than the iPhone's display. And speaking of the actual battery life, the Pixel 7 Pro has a larger battery. However, in the battery life tests that are on the internet right now, the iPhone still beats it out because of the crazy good software optimization. And that actually includes the 120 Hertz ProMotion technology, which not only runs up to 120 Hertz for a super smooth refresh rate, just like on the Pixel 7 Pro, but it can actually go down to as low as 24 Hertz when watching movies or videos, and all the way down to one Hertz with the always on display, saving the most amount of battery life possible. And now comparing the HDR quality, it right away looks like the iPhone is not only brighter, but it seems like the colors are actually popping up nicer on the display. Better color reproduction, much brighter highlights as you can see, and even in dark spot like this, the shadows look nice and crisp. The quality is just much better on the iPhone for HDR content. Now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and move over to the performance side. We're gonna start off with Geekbench 5. Of course, the new iPhone 14 Pro Max comes with the new A16 Bionic chip, very powerful, compared to the Pixel 7 Pro, which has the new Tensor G2. Now the main difference here is that the Pixel has 12 gigs of RAM, two times more than the iPhone's six gigs, which is a nice inclusion, even at the base price, that's impressive. So let's go ahead and run the CPU benchmark. All right, so the iPhone finished first. We have a score of 1881 for single core, and holy moly, look at the Pixel, man. They have a lot of catching up to do. Only 1,053 points. That means the 14 Pro Max is 79% faster in terms of single core. That's gonna help you for everything from opening your apps using basic apps, web browsing, snappiness, everything depends on that single core score. And as for the multi-core, it's also 69% faster, so everything you're doing between editing or anything that takes a lot of multi-core computational power, even gaming actually uses some of the CPU, which Geeker1 pointed out in a recent video, great video by the way, that's all gonna be helped by multi-core and the iPhone just destroys the pixel in terms of all these performance metrics. You know what, let's go ahead and run the Speedometer 2.0 web browsing test to see just how much faster the iPhone is gonna be for snappiness while web browsing. Oh my goodness, 385 on the iPhone. Man, the Pixel still has halfway to go. Ah, no way, only 105 on the Pixel 7 Pro. That means the iPhone is 3.6 times faster and snappier for web browsing. That just blows my mind. I cannot believe it is that much faster. This difference alone might make people just wanna go for the iPhone with a faster chip because you're web browsing, you're using apps, that's all gonna get impacted. All right, you know what? Let's give the Pixel another chance. Let's run Geekbench 5's compute test, which is gonna factor a lot of different things in different tests. It might even factor the benefits of the Tensor Core from Google, so let's run this one. And what in the world? It just keeps getting worse. We only have 4,425 on the Pixel 7 Pro compared to 15,300 on the 14 Pro Max. That's around three and a half times faster or higher score. I'm starting to think this new Tensor G2 is just marketing. It's just not impressive in terms of these numbers. Let's go ahead and do a gaming test. This right here is 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme in Unlimited Mode, which basically does it off screen so the resolution doesn't impact it. Let's go ahead and run this test. Now, I do wanna mention, yes, of course, the iPhone is $200 more expensive than the Pixel 7 Pro. However, if you care about performance, 
at all. The iPhone has just been killing it so far. So let's see how this gaming test does. And there you go, we have our scores. We got 17.6 FPS on the iPhone and 10.6 on the Pixel. That is 66% faster on the iPhone. Now that is a much better improvement for the Pixel, so the iPhone's not killing it that bad, but still 66% is a lot for graphics. And I think some people actually tested Genshin Impact on Twitter, posted some results showing that the iPhone just dominates it in terms of FPS. And now before I answer the original question of if the Pixel 7 Pro can measure up to the 14 Pro Max, the Pixel does have some new fancy features, including a brand new de-blurring tool, which can actually take your blurry photos and sharpen them. It can also automatically remove noise from your background and a couple of other cool features as well. Now I did mention the cameras a little bit in the beginning, but I do want to highlight a couple of differences because once again, the Pixel 7 Pro destroyed the iPhone 14 Plus. And a big reason for that is the new telephoto camera, which is now 5X optical and not only that but it's 48 megapixels which makes a huge difference and I wish we had that on the iPhone 14 Pro Max it's still only 12 and still only 3 X, so it's going to be very interesting to do the unbiased camera comparison. Those videos are always a ton of fun. We get so many awesome comments from you guys, so definitely subscribe so you don't miss out on that. And now let's answer that original question. Well, honestly, for only $200 more, the iPhone just gives you so much. The display quality is so much better. The speakers, the performance, the battery life differences. Now yes, the Pixel 7 Pro destroyed the 14 Plus, but the Pro Max just takes it to a whole new level where the $200 is way worth it if you're willing to go with iOS, which many people are. So if you can spend the extra money, then I would definitely do it for this iPhone. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And if you disagree with me, let me know in the comment section below. But if you enjoyed it, click that circle above to check out more videos like this one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.